Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin. I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. It's my buddy Dave. We're about to go shoot a fitness commercial and we're gonna take you guys with us. Let's go in there. We're gonna tap in the C70 right now. We got the 50 mil cow anamorphic. It's one of my favorite lenses. Pairs really well with the 40 mil that's on the full frame sensor. So it's like a 40 and with the crop factor, this is like a 75. So this is gonna be our wide over there on the C500, the tight on the C70. I think they're gonna cut really well together. Same codec, same white balance, same lenses. And from that last shoot I did, I know that these cameras pair well together. So it's my first time shooting anamorphic with this one, so we'll see how it goes. So like the one and only thing about the C500 that I hate is the 120 frames per second. It's terrible. It crops into the Super 16. So actually the C70's got better 120 frames per second than the C500. So that's kind of one of the cool things about using this camera. It's a Super 35 sensor. Got the Metabones PL mount. And uh, it's gonna look sick, stoked. So one thing when I shoot boxing, I like to actually adjust the shutter angle. Usually everybody says shoot at the 180 roll. I like to actually go to sometimes like 120 or even 90 if I want it to have that real sort of action fight scene. That's one thing I like to do. So what I'm checking right now is I'm checking my false color to see if this is a little bit too underexposed. Even, even when you want to shoot low key scenes, meaning it's like really dark, you still want to make sure you have a healthy, um, a healthy waveform. So what I like to also do is I'll use the, I'll toggle the LUT on and off button so I can see my log image. And then I also use the waveform as well. I use those three ways, false cover, LUT on and off, and then waveform. And I can make sure that I get enough exposure, which will help me avoid noise in the shadows with C-Log 2. What I'm gonna wind up doing is losing the NDs and dropping down to ISO 400, which is a little bit cleaner than 800. Even though you have a little bit less dynamic range in the highlights, it's still a little bit cleaner. And then in the grade, it allows me to pull it down. And I'll use one of my custom LUTs to do it. <laughs> Play goodbye. <laughs> the real deal. All right, here we go. Everybody give Tommy some encouragement. Come on, Tommy. Come on, baby. Come on, Tommy. Yeah. Action. So right now what we're doing is, I'm pulling focus for Dave. We sort of trade out when we shoot together a lot. We got a really collaborative type thing where we both kind of DP, we both kind of first AC for each other. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, action. Okay, now, um, let's get the same thing here. Can you do a spinning, oops, spinning? I don't know why I'm sweating so much. <laughs> I'm sweating more than Aaron. Did someone spray me? <laughs> Alright, rip it, Tommy. So we got Dave up here. He's rigging the light up. He's got a 300D Mark II up there. And we use this sort of cutter board to break the light up. This little guy is a piece of styrofoam board that we've used on probably five or six shoots now. It has this cool way of breaking up the light. So we're gonna use it again. Credit to my man Dave here. So this was our reference frame. This was uh, Ronda Rousey. She's a UFC fighter. So I really like the, how the light shaft comes in. So basically the subject is sort of backlit and then the sides are dark. So now we got Dave here. <laughs> As we sort of match up our framing, kind of like here, you can see the screen, kind of that shaft of light coming down, separating our subject with the dark wall. And once we throw a grade on it, probably be a little moodier like that. And then you can really notice kind of how similar it looks. That's actually, that's one of the things I like to do is if you start with a reference, you and your team can always refer back to that. And you can say, okay, what do we like? How do we make it more similar to what our reference is? Sweet. All right, PJ, I start the right Three, two, one, action. Yeah. 
So we're swapping from the tight. Now we're gonna go to the wide. We're on a 75, now we're going to a 40. I like to do that every time I shoot a scene. I like to shoot a wide and a tight. So in the edit, it gives you different options. Another thing I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll change angles a little bit. That way, it's just when you cut, it doesn't look exactly the same. It doesn't look like a jarring cut. It looks a little more, um, you know, just it's a little easier to watch in my opinion. And hopefully in your opinion too. All right, so we got Dave tapping in on the C70. He's gonna do a little slider shot. It's gonna cut really well with this one. Um, I think he's, he's in high frame rate on this one. So when you're on the slider and you're pushing in, you have to kind of exaggerate the movement. You have to go a little faster than you might normally do it because since you're slowing it down four times or five times, depending on your frame rate, you have to overemphasize it. So I know that's what he's gonna do right now. One of the really important jobs on a commercial set is a producer. So Cassie, why don't you show us what a producer does on this specific set? <laughs> Jesus, Cassie, oh. you gotta give me a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> I put the sweat on Aaron because he's just not hot enough. It's <laughs> incredibly offensive. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right, that's good. yeah, that's good, he said, Cassie. Let's do, let's do one with and one without Dave on that light. All right, yeah. last shot of the day. We're on the C500 still. 40 mil, really liking this lens. Um, one thing we're doing with fitness stuff, I like to follow the movement sometimes. Starting low, going high, if he's doing something with the weight. That way it kind of takes the viewer, it puts him right in the moment. All right, here we go. One and a half, one and a half. Sick. There he is. Sick, Rick. <sighs> 98. <laughs> 99! So what I'm doing is I'm gonna put a diopter on. This lets you focus closer. So anamorphic lenses, a lot of times the minimum focus is about three feet. So what I'll do is I'll put a diopter on. There's a plus one diopter. It changes the minimum focus to 1.5 feet. So you can get a lot closer, but it also makes your maximum focus three feet. So you can literally only use it for the close-ups, but for this specific shot that we're about to get of his hands, that's gonna be it. All right, guys, that's it for us today. We just wrapped up in there. I think we got a lot of sick shots. Pretty stoked on what we got. Big shout out to my man, Dave, here. <laughs> who's who's, who's sneaking out of, out, out of the frame. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of a cool one. So most of the time on a, a more formal shoot, you'll have a director who's doing the director's job and a DP who's doing the DP's job. A lot of the time when I work with Dave, just because we're good pals, we'll both sort of do both jobs. So it's a lot of fun in there, and hopefully you guys enjoy this video. So if you like this kind of content, maybe consider hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.